Okay, moving to the top, thermostat. Uh, <clears throat> this is interesting. They, they sometimes have a, an auxiliary line that can come out of the thermostat right here. Uh, and then Kubota always had and has, I can see here, a uh, thermostat bypass, little hose. Let me get this guy out of the way, maybe. And uh, this guy right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can get a little closer. The rubber thingy that goes right there. Um, so they have a large thermostat bypass. <coughs> and, um, uh, it, you know, it's just to keep their engine, the, the, the coolant circulating in the engine. Um, you can kind of see it here a little bit better. Get my hand out of the way. And um, what that does is it, it allows a little bit amount of flow all the time uh, past the thermostat. So even when the thermostat is, cl is closed, you still have some flow going through the head, which is good. Um, the engine temperature sensor on these guys a bit different than some engines. So Kubota puts it in the back of the head, right there. So that's where the, the engine temperature sensor is. It's just a simple one wire sensor. Uh, no fancy uh, piezoelectric stuff in there. Just looking at your dash, it's hot, it's cold, good to go. Don't need to overcomplicate things. So, <clears throat> The, the, the thing, the issue being, uh, if ever anybody was to put a cab, now why you would put a cab on these guys with heat and all that, hey, to each their own, uh, I might actually end up doing it if I have to. Um, but some people would put their lines in, in the cooler bypass and then when you shut your heater off, the uh, thermostat bypass would, wouldn't be active anymore, it would be problematic. So they actually do sell, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a little spacer thing that goes between the thermostat and the transmission or the transmission dull the uh, engine block here front cover uh, the little spacer and it has an outlet and then you can just plumb the return uh, in this guy here so that that works really really well uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I didn't get the block heater yet and I'm debating whether, yeah, I'll probably end up getting the block heater. I believe it screws in right there. Beautiful spot for it. So, I mean, this is, this is really, really well made. Uh, compared to some of the stuff, this is amazing. Um, so we got the lower rad hose. Couldn't have much of a tighter fit. Upper rad hose looks really good. We got this, uh, what is that? Oh, that's my tack. Oh, interesting. I gotta show you guys this. All right, so I'm just gonna make a bit of an adjustment here. What I was talking about the oil cooler bypass, uh, let me try that again. What I was talking about the <clears throat> thermostat bypass is this little line right here, this little hose. And then, pièce de résistance, this cable screws into the front cover for your tachometer. So your tack, um, RPM, engine, hours, all manual. No fancy electromechanic stuff. <laughs> this, this used to work back, back in the day and you'd never ever ever have problems with this and they still keep it so that is beautiful good job Kubota on that one now when I was looking at the tractors I was there's one thing that that kind of stumbled me on this <clears throat> the BX has an actual alternator big ass alternator on the on the drive the right side of it and uh, the B has this little dyno Nothing wrong with the dyno. I mean, you're not you're not going to be running huge electrical demands on this this unit, but it's a dyno. It's cheap, little AC current going through here, and probably somewhere up under the dash you have your voltage rectifier, so uh, converts AC to DC and does your voltage uh, rectification. Simple, simple, simple. Works beautiful. Love the location of the oil filter. 
perfectly accessible, great. Uh, and then the starter, I mean, could you possibly have a starter location be any better than that? I mean, it is just right there, nothing in the way. Easy, easy to check your connections, easy to check everything. Um, oh, did they give me a, fair, a, a spare few? What is this guy? Oh, huh, this is interesting. I don't know what that's for. Spare wire. And you got your main fuse here. So that would be uh, like a, like a, if your system overcharges or, you know, big load, it's just you pop this guy in, pop it in, the tape will take a walk. And then we got our little fuse panel right here. So this guy, Hazard's solenoid, 30 amps. I'm assuming that that is the fuel pump solenoid, although actually that doesn't make any sense because uh, the wires are definitely not 30 amps. So it's got to be for this guy here. Uh, or there might be a, uh, a main power solenoid underneath the dash. That's probably what that 30 amp is. I mean, you can say 30 amp all you want, but if you don't have the wire to back it up, so unless it's very short, it's got to be maybe this guy. So 30 amp. Uh, right side outlet, interesting. Headlights, uh, work light, 5 amp, interesting. And glow plug lamp, uh, we got that. And they got this fancy little vaccine passport QR code that uh, you can actually scan to see if the, the tractor's been vaccinated or not for COVID. So that's a good deal. So we got our stamping here. So it's a D1105D, it's a double D sexy and 1.123 liter <laughs> okay so yeah that works um this is interesting because when i was talking to my salesman originally he was like the 26 and the 23 or one same tractor he's like same tractor just one has a little the, the the screw on the pump gives it a little bit more power then i was looking at the bottom line on the uh description sheet and the weight is off. So if the weight is off, this can't be the same tractor exactly. So I started looking through the specs and then I noticed that the tire size on the 2601 is bigger. The ground clearance is about an inch taller. So, okay, that's interesting. But then I was looking deeper into the specs and it's not the same engine at all. So it is a bit of a bigger engine. Uh, again, to K Kubota's uh, credit, they don't just use one engine and crank the fuel pump on it all the time. Like some other <coughs> Case New Wallet or um, <coughs> John Deere um, brands tend to do. So nice to see that they're doing that. So again, um, really, really happy with the, the engine power plant portion of this unit. Very clean. You know, if I decide to have more output, I can install an alternator on here, which is, you know, just put a simple one wire alternator and, and take out the rectifier. Super easy to do. Got to be careful with the clearance for the exhaust, but uh, that's not a big deal. Um, everything else just looks absolutely bulletproof on this guy. Just absolutely great. Now, Kubota used to have this thing <clears throat> where they would use actually three different um, reservoirs for the differential in front. So you had the main with a filler and a drain, and then you would have the side uh, axles or planetaries, or how it's not really a planetary, but the, 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 the side uh, final drives, um, be a completely different oil reservoir. So they used to be sealed off from each other, and, and now they use a single, which I think is a better idea. Um, so you just have one place to check your fluid. Uh, I think it's good on this one. Just grab a little rag here. Again, nice to see a bit of an upgrade on that. Kubota used to send everything low and, uh, it was up to the dealer to, yep, we got oil. So anywhere between there and there, you're good to go. Super easy. Um, these bearings here, 
Um, they, they, they do, or they used to, again, I haven't been in the Kubota game for a while, but they used to be every now and then, uh, they, they would let go and then your, your wheel would move around. So, um, not a big, big, big repair, but I'm interested to see if, if this is better than the old style. I, I think that the big problem with the old style was that nobody knew that there was a damn oil reservoir here. So people would maintain the center one. People have always had nice fresh oil in here, but the side ones, they'd never ever get to it, which is a pain in the butt. And I can't blame the customer for that. I mean, most customers aren't mechanics or engineers or anything like that. And it was just, you know, uh, lack of education 